Are we? Thank you. We are going to call this meeting to order now. It is 7.01 on June 27. This is a public meeting of the City of Portland Police Accountability Commission Subcommittee on Research. If the Spanish language interpreter, I think it's Ruth, yeah, can please give the information on the Spanish language interpretation, please? Yes, of course. Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenas tardes a todos. Bienvenidos. Estamos aquí nuevamente con el comité para ser responsable de la policía en el condado aquí en eh, de Portland. Si tienen ustedes alguna pregunta o algo y quieren escuchar esta conversación en español, por favor, debajo de su pantalla van a encontrar un globo terráqueo para que se puedan ustedes eh, conectar con su idioma preferido preferido. Si están conectándose con un teléfono celular, por favor presione las teclitas donde diga más o more, los tres puntitos y ahí seleccione el idioma. Todo esto va a ser interpretación simultánea en español. Gracias. Muchas gracias, Ruth. Bienvenida. The city also offers ASL interpretation which is being provided by Andrea and I think Andrea and so Amanda will come later. You can pin their video feed and that is helpful to you. Finally, the closed captioning is turned on in Zoom as another means of assistance. But please note that this is an automatic captioning services and it is not always accurate. The city supports access to meetings of the Police Accountability Commission and can provide other language support as well. Please email in advance of future public meetings, either as a response to a public meeting notice or directly to police accountability at portlandoregon.gov to ask for other access assistance, including interpretation into other language. This meeting is a public meeting subject to city Portland administrative code in Oregon state law and is being recorded. For this meeting, the chat function is enabled for commission members to communicate with each other. Members of the public will be able to ask questions using Zoom's questions and a Q&A feature. As the commissioners are presenting and or discussing things, if attendees have questions, please feel free to submit them through the Q&A. We hope to use this feature to help guide our conversation during the, the meeting and future meetings agenda topics. We like to be clear that not all questions will be answered during the meeting, but if answered, both the questions and answer will be visible to you and will become part of the meeting record. To access this feature, click on Q&A icon in the middle of your screen. And thank you. And now, now, Let's go to do the land acknowledgement on behalf of the PAC. The Portland metro area rests on traditional village sites of the Monoma, Wasco, Cowlitz, Catlamet, Clackamas, Pans of Chinook, Tualitin, Calapuya, Molala, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River. Indigenous people have created communities and summer encampments to harvest and enjoy the plentiful natural resources of the area for the last 11,000 years. We want to recognize that Portland today is a community of many diverse native people and con who continue to live and work here. We respectfully acknowledge and honor all indigenous communities, past, present, and future, and are grateful for their ongoing and vibrant presence. We also acknowledge the systematic policies of genocide, relocation, and assimilation that still impact many indigenous Native American families today. As settlers and guests of these lands, we respect the work of indigenous leaders and families and pledge to make ongoing efforts to recognize their knowledge, creativity, and resilience. Thank you. For the community agreements, what we will do, we will have time for each of us to read these two pages, remember? And then at the end, I will ask if you are agree with these community agreements. Let's start reading.
please go to the next. Oh, this is the slide. This is the slide. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, before we continue, I wanna ask if uh, you approve the community agreements and you can show me your thumbs up. Thank you very much. Welcome, Debbie, Commissioner Debbie. Okay, I'm gonna pass um, these to the co-chairs to discuss the timeline. I will take the first um, the first part of the of the timeline. Um, the commission is currently in the fact finding phase of work, expected to go into August. It includes hearing from key stakeholders, identifying barriers to accountability in Portland presently, and examining systems of accountability from other jurisdictions. It also includes increased community engagement work. Future phases phases of work will develop the parameters for the new police accountability system before the commission presents that to the city council. In in 2023 for their consideration and approval. Following today's meeting, here are the next several upcoming meetings of the Commission. The Subcommittee on Research will hold its next meeting July 14th. The Subcommittee on Community Engagement Events will meet on July next, next on July 18th, and the full Commission will continue to meet and hold briefings this Thursday with the Police Bureau's Police Review Board Coordinator, July 11th with Mental Health Alliance and amica, um, amicus to the settlement agreement. July 21st with the Albina Ministerial Alliance Coalition for Justice and Police Reform, who is another amicus, as well as City Commissioner Rubio, and continuing into late July with more briefings that will be added to the calendar. This slide is current is the current project plan for the fact finding phase of the police accountability commission's work it's not it's not our agendas and it's not set in stone this slide is mostly for members of the public to be able to understand how the commission gets from now through the end of the phase which focuses on identifying areas of agreement among commission members as to barrier as to barriers to accountability in the current system best practices from Portland and other jurisdictions and suggestions to consider from experts as well as talking, uh, taking public comment and meeting with key stakeholders. Today's meeting is in the green box or is the green box just below the center of the screen with the purple border. And let's go a review of today's meeting purpose. So, Today's meeting's agenda, uh, meeting's agenda focuses on member research conducted between the last meeting and today on other jurisdictions approaches, approach to administrative investigations, civil, civilian oversight and police accountability. It will start with every member having a few minutes to talk about each jurisdiction they researched. Following these reports back, we will have time for discussion where members of the subcommittee can point out practices from other jurisdictions they'd like to designate as a best practice for the full pack to consider later as a model. Finally, the subcommittee will decide on steps such as which jurisdiction should be added for research prior to our next meeting on July 14th and which jurisdictions might need more research. After that, we'll take a short break and then start planning the other part of our research on suggestions to consider from experts and academics. This will involve brainstorming more groups to add to the list, as well as determining which members will, re will research their suggestions between now and the next subcommittee meeting on July 14th. We will then have public comment before ending the meeting. So best practices from other jurisdictions. So, um, Oh, look at that. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't review this slide that well, but um, uh, here are the, uh, the re research reports that we will be hearing tonight. So um, let's see. So we're gonna be, um, do, does Debbie mind um, starting with, um, with sharing the information that she share, um, that she found from Oakland, Denver City and County. Are you okay with that, Debbie? I, I, I am fine with that, yeah. So just to, to first tell me if you can't hear me well enough, I have the air conditioner on in the background and it's okay, you can hear, okay, good. Then I'll leave it on. 
Um, and I am not sure this is two minutes, so just cut me off if I, if I uh, you know, exceed my time. Okay, so Oakland, police, Oakland California, um, they have a, a, a police commission that's a volunteer commission that oversees the police department. They also do the civil office of civilian office of inspector general and the community police review agency. They can fire the police chief and they play a significant role in hiring. They hire and fire the CPRA is the, is the initials for community police review agency. So I'll use that because it's shorter. They hire and fire the CPRA director and the inspector general. They meet in public and they encourage public participation throughout their meetings. They have subpoena power and can compel testimony uh, and can hire outside counsel. They approve or reject police department policies. City council has the final say. In the process, um, hire, they are in the process of hiring a consultant right now to advise them on how to transfer all investigations to CPRA. Right now, Internal Affairs also does them. And then the agency itself, Community Police Review Agency, it receives all public complaints of police misconduct, prioritizes cases, and is required to investigate the most serious offenses. Others, the other ones, they only require initial intake. Their annual report explains that they would like to take on more cases, but they don't have the staff or the budget. After the investigation is complete, the CPRA recommends findings and discipline. If the chief does not agree with their, their recommendations, then there's a discipline committee that's made up of three members of the, of the, the public commission, the police commission, and they review the case and they make the final decision. The city administrator may not change the final outcome. Internal affairs also investigates cases. So sometimes cases are investigated by both agencies. Involved officers are entitled to a Skelly hearing, which sounds similar to the one that uh, Commissioner Hamelman talks about that I can never remember, like something like Wildemire or something like that. They're entitled to a Skelly hearing if they wish to appeal the outcome. The CPRA, Inspector General, and Commission all have access to investigative and other files. And then this, this other thing, the inspector general is responsible for reevaluating compliance with the Department of Justice settlement agreement and will do so even after the agreement ends. Community members may file their complaints with the CPRA or the police department. And then Denver, so the city and county- Debbie, yeah. Debbie I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, after each jurisdiction, uh, we, I'm going to ask if there, or you can ask if there is any clarifying questions. Oh, sure, yeah. Is there any clarifying questions? Yes, Catherine? Yeah, Debbie, um, did you say that the board um, has um, oversight over the directives? Is that, I, I just wondered about that piece. That was the piece I couldn't quite oh, get. they can, oh, let me see. <laughs> I have to say, because I was going back and forth between these two cities, I kind of got, get them scrambled in my head. So let me look at my notes here. Um, let's see. I mean, they can for sure recommend them. And then the city council has the final say. So they can recommend policies and the city council has the final say. If I remember right though, the police department has to, has to run the recommendations by this, the police commission and they can say no. So, um, but, you know, Catherine, if you want to double check that, you know, I sent them on Friday, I sent out my full okay. summary of both of them. That would be the, rather than having to go to the website, that would be the easiest way to find out the answer to be sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Debbie, you can continue. Okay. So then, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, oh, Commissioner. Dan. Uh, Commissioner Dan has another question. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, I um, thought I heard you say that they have final say in what the findings are about the officers. Is that true? I heard that there weren't very many of those around the country. Is that what you said? So if, if there's a disagreement between the CPRA and the Internal Affairs Police Chief, because it's the police chief who ends up you know, making the, the final say on like uh, findings and discipline, then it goes to this 
back to the police commission. They picked three met three of their members. So these are volunteer members of the public. They are form a discipline committee. They review all of the information and they can even ask for extra investigation if they want to. Um, and then once they review everything, they have the final say. They just say, you know, the officer, this is what they what, what they're whether sustained or not. And if they're sustained, then they recommend it, then they say what the discipline will be. And the city administrator can't change it. Now remember the officer does have that skelly hearing that so that's sort of the safety valve. Um, so um, so yeah, that's how that's how they say it works. Thank you. Is there any other questions or clarification? Okay, thank you, Commissioner. David, you can continue with the next one. Okay, so the next one I did was Denver, and that was a twofer because since the city and county is a consolidated government, this Office of Independent Monitor oversees both the sheriff and the police, and they also do fire uh, department personnel that carry guns, but I didn't even look at that. Um, so they, they have what's called the Office of Independent Monitor, and it's a civilian oversight agency for police and sheriff departments. So it's advised by the Citizen Oversight Board. That's a volunteer board. They have an interesting selection process that I am not going to outline in the interest of time, but it's in my, uh, my bigger, my longer write-up. And they are moving, but they're right now moving to a more empowered system. And they have also have a transition plan between the old board and the new board that I thought would be interesting to look at because it kind of it's not like the old ones just go away and the new ones come on. They kind of are weaving them together so that there's some continuity. Um, the board must reflect the diversity of Denver, ethnic, racial, geographic, professional backgrounds, and expertise. The meetings are open to the public except when they are discussing specific cases. The board meets at least bi-monthly with the monitor to hear about the status of investigations of disciplinary proceedings. They meet at least quarterly with the under sheriff, chief of police, and they have something called a manager of safety, which I assume is sort of like a police commissioner or something like that. They meet at least three times a year to hear from the public. With the consent of city council, the board appoints the independent monitor who serves at the pleasure of the board. That also was an interesting process about how they go about hiring an independent monitor. Their job also is to assess the monitor's performance. They can direct the monitor to review certain cases. The board has access to personnel and internal affairs files. They may make recommendations on investigations and determinations of policy violations and discipline while the cases are in process. So then the person who heads the agency, that the agency is called the Office of Independent Monitor. It receives misconduct complaints, monitors investigations, and may recommend findings and discipline. The, the monitor may employ independent legal counsel, may monitor investigations or, con or conduct independent investigations. The monitor can request an additional investigation or conduct an independent investigation um, themselves. They may issue subpoenas. They recently adopted a policy that requires the Department of Safety to give charity advisement to officers subject to supplementary independent monitor investigations. But it sounds like that had been a challenge where the officers wouldn't participate. So now they get the charity advisement and then they are supposed to. Um, they may monitor or participate, this kind of baffled me, but the monitor may monitor or participate in criminal investigations of sworn officers that are being carried out by the DA's office. Um, and they can participate in or monitor cases at the request of the board or the manager of safety. And the community members may file their complaints with the Office of Independent Monitor, the board, the citizen board or internal affairs. They, 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 by policy, they encourage some submission no later than 60 days after the incident, but there is no deadline. And they have, they do uh, offer mediation, it appears from their annual report that people are taking advantage of that option. And then I did a whole step-by-step -step 
process in my write-up about how the internal affairs process works. So if you want to take a look at that, that's, that's where it is. The monitor has full access to that process. And once the investigation and dip, disciplinary processes are completed, the officers may appeal their cases to the Civil Service Commission and then the courts. So there's the Denver story. Thank you. Is there uh, questions about Denver? Comments? No? Thank you, Commissioner. You're welcome. Okay. In the list, the next in the list is Commissioner Dan, but we can go any order you prefer. Who would you like, who would you be next? I can go. Damn. Um, but <laughs> I, I'm gonna start by saying, uh, as I mentioned, as the meeting was getting started, it's 88 degrees in the room that I'm in. Um, so my brain's a little melted. I've, uh, I had to deal with some personal stuff today, so I didn't, uh, do as much preparation as Commissioner Iona did. And um, I also want to preface all these remarks by myself and by the other commissioners by saying, you know, we're talking about best practices, but we don't know, we're only seeing what's written on pieces of paper. We don't really know whether this is working, whether the people who've gone through the systems got what they wanted out of it, or whether there's been any justice in these cities. So I think there's more research to be done just even in the cities that we're already looking at. Um, so uh, I'll start with San Diego County. Uh, the Citizens Law Enforcement Review Board, or CLRB, and they say it like that, even though I don't like saying acronyms that way. I don't like saying PAC, especially because that means something else. But I'll say CLRB because that's what they say. Um, anyway, so they uh, this uh, is a board made up of community members that uh, has meetings, and like the ones that Commissioner Ariana was describing, they have a public part of the meeting and then they go into a closed session when they're discussing the individual cases. Um, I'm not saying that's the best practice. I'm saying that's what they're doing and that's because of uh, California state laws. Um, the investigators are allowed to do site visits when they're doing the investigations, which is something that jumped out at me. I thought that was very important. Um, the board has uh, um, 11 members on it. The, Charter allows up to 15 members. Our charter doesn't say how many members are going to be on the board that we're doing, um, but they have 11 on there uh, currently, and they're affirmed by the County Board of Supervisors, which is kind of like our city council. Um, they have a quorum requirement of a majority of appointed members. So I think I just highlight that. Um, they have an independent legal counsel. Um, so that is something that um, I think is a good practice. Uh, again, we want to see how it's actually working out for them, but so they're not listening to the city, you know, the county attorney or the county council, it's called. Um, then when they do their hearings, they take the, the 11 members of the board um, can, and I've, I have to say, I've, I've been getting information from this board for 20 some years now. They can take a panel of three members and hold an in-depth hearing about any one of the cases. Generally, the staff is preparing a case file for the board to review with recommendations for findings, and then they discuss it, and they might agree, and they might disagree with the recommended findings. But in some cases, they're allowed to break into these three-person panels, and there's a reason I'm bringing that up, uh, but I'll get back to that. Um, there's, you know, there's just way too many other things to talk about, uh, uh, you know, in two minutes. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to have more time to go into these. Maybe at the next meeting we can do more later on in this meeting. Um, but those are the general uh, gist of what goes on in San Diego County. They have uh, jurisdiction over both the sheriff's office and the um, uh, probation office. Uh, but again, that's not something we're really interested. And they also have oversight uh, and the ability to investigate uh, death, deadly force cases like our board's going to. Thank you. Questions. <laughs> yes, please. If there are any questions or comments about San Diego County, no? You can continue, Commissioner. Oh, thank you. Uh, so the city of San Diego, not to be confused, um, has, has a a separate board, and it, this is a very difficult, this is, so I, I don't know if I said this already, I spent more than 20 hours doing this research, and part of it was this San Diego City, because they're in transition 
from the board that they had before the George Floyd uprising to a more empowered one. And the way they decided to do it there was to take the people who were already on the existing board and make them the members of the new board. But the, <laughs> somebody wrote into that transition plan that uh, the city wouldn't appoint new members until the new board was finished being designed. So as a result, they're down from 23 members to 15 members, and they have changed their guidelines so that the quorum is based on a majority of the seated members. So that is also, that's the second city, uh, both, you know, both San Diego, but the San Diego County, San Diego State Board, that quorum is uh, what's happening. Um, the 23 members, and I, this is different from how I remember understanding how this board works, but the 23 members also break down into three-person panels. Um, this is done regularly, though. This is not the same as the county where that happens rarely. Uh, well, according to the paperwork. Um, and those three members review the individual case, but then they bring that case back to the full board for a vote. Um, uh, so that's, uh, and those hearings also are all held behind closed doors. They're not open to the public. Um, uh, I, I, you know, there's there's a whole bunch more, but you know, I feel like my two minutes are already up just for this um, city. So I'm I'm willing to take some questions. I haven't typed up any of the notes from San Diego City yet. I have only gotten through three out of seven pages of my notes for the county. I'm hoping to post those in the next couple of days for everybody to look at. And you know, for me personally, I'd rather have everything in writing and you know, kind of go through it. But it's helpful to hear from the people who are doing the investigations or the research. Thank you, Commissioner. Any questions? You have clarifying questions or comments? No, thank you. Who would like to go next? Well, I have one more. Oh, you have one more. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, I also did New York's uh, Civilian Complaint Review Board, or CCRB, and did not. They do not pronounce it curb, just for the record. Um, it is. Uh, only made up of 15 people in a in a city that's got 8 million people in it, which you know astounds me. Uh, and five members are appointed by the mayor, five are by city council, three by the police commissioner, one by something called the police for the public advocate, uh, and one uh, the chair is appointed by both the mayor and city council. And they also similarly break down into panels of three people to review each case. But um, those panels have to be one mayor appointee, one council appointee, and one appointee from the police commissioner. Uh, and uh, the mayor or city council members can be swapped out for the public advocate uh, or the um, chairperson uh, in certain cases. Um, I could not find out, this is very, you know, we, I, we had 23 criteria laid out and I could not find out from anything I said I read about the CCRB if they have their own independent council. Many of the members of the board have the letters ESQ after their name. So they're all, many of them are attorneys uh, themselves, but that doesn't mean that they're acting as attorneys for um, either the community member that's come in or for the, uh, for the board itself. So I'm not quite sure whether they have their own independent counsel or not. Um, they have a very bizarre and unusual system in all of the ones that I've ever seen around the country where the board hears the case and if they recommend a sustained finding that's gonna end up with severe discipline, like more than a slap on the wrist, and I'm be using that metaphorically, um, that it gets turned over to a, uh, a trial, um, a, an administrative trial where they have a officer, uh, they have a, their own litigators in the CCRB, not the board members themselves, who act like prosecuting attorneys basically, uh, it's not clear to me who acts as the defense attorney for the police. And I'm, you know, this is one of these things why I need to call and find out more, both, both from community members and from the people who actually run this thing. But the police department itself has its own um, lawyer advocates and they can run their own internal trials. And if the CCRB is too busy with all the other cases they have, they can turn over prosecution of a case that was heard by the community members to internal affairs for the prosecution. Uh, and when I say prosecution, it's not a criminal thing. So, it's, you know, the most that going to come out of it is that the officer is going to get fired. Um, so that, you know, that's a very 
um, unusual, and I don't know if that's something we even want to consider here because it sort of feels you know, very formal and kind of recreating the criminal justice system in a different way. But that's the thing that really stands out to me about the um, CCRB. Um, and you know, again, there's tons and tons of more uh, details that I can get into. Um, okay, before I give up the floor, <laughs> one of the things that's consistent across all three boards that I looked at is the findings. We, and this is something we haven't really talked about yet on the commission. Um, generally, there are four findings almost anywhere you go. We have four here in Portland. Uh, one of them is, uh, and I'll just use the terms that are in New York because it's sitting in front of me. One of them is sustained, meaning that the findings, you know, the, what they uh, substantiated, that the, what the person said is true and the officer violated policy. Uh, we call that sustained here in Portland. One is uh, within guidelines. We call that exonerated here. There are other names for it within policy. One is unfounded, meaning what the person alleged didn't happen, and one is um, insufficient evidence, which in New York is called unable to determine, and here in, in other jurisdictions is called not sustained, which is just very confusing because anything that's not sustained is not sustained, so I don't like that finding. So in terms of best practices or things that people do in other cities, I want to make sure we try to avoid using the term not sustained to mean a finding that wasn't sustained so that we can have those nuances of, um, you know, well, what, they, what the person alleged didn't happen or that what happened was within guidelines. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any questions? Okay, next on the list is Commissioner Angie. Uh, would you like to go or do you want? Yes, you can go, but um, Deb, uh, Commissioner Debbie and Commissioner Handelman both have um, very in-depth uh, research and lo um, lots of information, and mine is a lot less in-depth, I'm sorry, um, and uh, I can I can do more research related to this. I can, but I had um, the city of San Francisco and the city of Minneapolis. Um, tonight, I'm only gonna talk about the city of San Francisco because I have not done as much as I should have for the city of Minneapolis. I'm sorry about that. Um, but um, I wanted to talk about the city of San Francisco who has um, a, a department of police accountability that um, is under their, gov their form of their government basically. And in that they have an audit division, an investigation division, mediation division, outreach division, policy division, public records division. Um, so it, and all of these divisions are different branches of their government. So basically like, as like we have the water bureau, they have, um, they have the investigation division, which, um, is only going to, um, look at allegations of misconduct against, um, officers. So they also have an audit division, which is, you know, kind of parallel to our audit division which conducts um, performance audit, audits on re and reviews whether San Francisco Police Department's personnel and management have co um, complied with federal law. So, you know, we have our, our city auditor also and that it's kind of along the same lines as that in, at the city of Portland. Um, they have an outreach division, which, you know, um, is going to be outreach for a, a lot of things, um, including uh, the work that uh, that's being done for, um, for uh, uh, police account the Department of Police Accountability. And then they also have a public records division, which I've worked with before. And, um, you know, that's, that's pretty um, standard. The one division that's a little bit different, well, not a little bit different, that it seems a lot different from what we have now is called the mediation division. And that division, the goal is to help improve the relationship between the community and SFPD. They foster conversations where the parties are free to uh, present their perspective in an interaction that has resulted in a that has resulted from a complaint. So um, this uh, they refer to themselves as DPA, the Department of um, Police Accountability. The DPA's mediators are unpaid volunteers that have achieved an um, achieved an applied behavior certification and or forty hour mediator training certification. Um, all their train, um, mediators are trained and experienced in helping people resolve their differences in a constructive manner. Um, and they have 130 uh, mediators right now, but they also have outreach on their webpage um, for more people to volunteer to be a mediator. So these aren't, um, these aren't 
uh, they have 130 of them. Um, I didn't get into what the um, overarching, you know, the overarching uh, uh, power structure is within their de uh, Department of um, Police Accountability. I'm, I, I, I would bet that there's a couple of people on our commission that have worked with them before, but maybe not. Um, and so uh, that's kind of where I am with my research right now. I have a little bit more, but, um, from, but I, haven't, I haven't dove in and I, I do need to circle back around with um, at least one person on our commission to talk more about the um, information that, that they have on um, the Department of Police Accountability at San Francisco. So, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Is that question or comments about San Francisco? Okay, thank you. Next on the list is Commissioner Monica. Would you like to continue? Thank you. Sure. So I uh, researched Philadelphia and Philadelphia's case is pretty interesting because they, well, they're, you know, at first when I was just talking to them, I thought they were ahead of where we are at. But basically, they wrote into law in, um, in July of 2021, a new system of police accountability. Um, and what they have put into law is they have put a citizen police oversight commission that is made of nine members. And they will have also, aside from that, an executive director, which is a paid position, and uh, three other employees that work for the executive director. So the executive director is going to be somebody that has a lot of knowledge in law, leadership, management, experience and expertise conduct conducting supervising investigations um, is going to be a paid full-time position with a three other investigators that work for them. And then there's gonna be a board and the board is composed of nine members, volunteers of the public. Um, and there's a whole bunch of information about who can or cannot be part of this commission, how to, you know, the requirements, um, they are not allowed to be ex-police members, ex-union members of the police. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things that, you know, they cannot, they cannot have any kind of record or felony record, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they are going to receive every single complaint. The only complaints they're not going to receive are the ones related to like labor disputes, like overtime or like they work me too much, those kinds of labor disputes in the, uh, uh, around the police, but every single other complaint they're going to get. Um, and they are able to, let me go back to my notes here. I'm trying to look through the law and also through my notes, one second. So they're, they're gonna be, uh, they're, they have permission to go to the sites, the crime scenes. They're gonna have a lot of training before they can do that. Um, and they are not going to have power to actually uh, say what discipline they, 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 they're going to recommend discipline, but they don't have the power to enforce it. Um, they do have subpoena power that is written in the, in the law that they just put in. So, uh, police members that are part of a complaint have to show up, uh, to investigations. So that was cool. Um, they, um, if the police department does not agree with the recommendations that the board came up with, um, they have to explain why in writing and put it out in writing. Um, there is an appeals process. Um, okay, let me see what else I found. Sorry, I'm trying to go through. There's a lot of notes I have in here, but I don't think I have enough time to go through all of them. Um, the members of the commission will be there for four years and they, oh, they're trying to represent all the different neighborhoods in the city, which was a little bit complicated. Uh, the, the members of the commission, uh, they want to have representation from all the neighborhoods in, in, in Philadelphia. 
Um, but the issue they're running into is that there are certain neighborhoods that have a lot of volunteers that want to that want to be part of it, and then there's other neighborhoods that people are not applying to, and, and their applicants they're they're kind of getting limited. They, they would like to. There are better applicants in some of those neighborhoods that they haven't been able to accept because they don't belong to the neighborhoods that are not being represented by by people applying. Um, let's see. So the executive director, the city staffers are all paid and then the, the, the board members are volunteers. Uh, they meet every two weeks, the board, and they review every single complaint. Um, let's see, oh, and, and the other thing that Philadelphia did that I think was really cool is that they're going to be um, requiring a lot of reporting. So there's gonna be reports from the city council, from the mayor, from the public, um, and there's gonna be two different types of reports, reports of, um, of investigations that have been completed that will have all of the information uh, to the public. And then there's a non-public database that has all the investigations that are in process. But everything is going to be published online for anyone to see. There's going to be annual reports and they're, they're not going to keep out names. It's, there's not going to be um, any of those limitations of confidentiality. They're just going to put it all out there for the public. And they're, they're thinking that this is really important for transparency. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Anyway, um, there's a lot more information on my notes, um, but I kind of try to summarize there what I found. Um, yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. Is that a question? Oh, Debbie, Commissioner Debbie, please go ahead. Yeah, Monica, thanks. You mentioned an appeals process. Is that for members of the public who complain or is that for like the police? after their pro the process is done. I believe it's for police. Okay, yeah. right, because I it's funny, you know how we have an, we can, complainants in Portland can, com can appeal to the Citizen Review Committee. And it's funny, the two, the cities I looked at, yeah, didn't, I didn't see anything that talked about a community member appeal process. It was just mm -hmm. the police. So you're kind of found the same thing then, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. Have any other question? Yes, Commissioner Dunn. Yeah, this isn't uh, a question. This is more following up on Commissioner Iona's just comment that um, the appeals in uh, in the cities that I, the two cities that I found that have them, uh, basically the appeals go back to the same people who heard the case in the first place, um, which kind of seems like a strange process. But I just thought I'd mention that. So, you know, again, it's, it's a practice. I'm not saying it's the best practice. Thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Monica, you also did research for social justice. Yeah, I, I did not get to that, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, okay. Thank you very much, thank you. And then Commissioner Sofia is, yeah. Please. All right, all right. So I will just tell you right up front that I thought it was Fort Worth, Texas. And when I went to do the research for the Fort Worth, I realized, uh, I've talked to a friend like it's Austin, Texas. So I have looked at both of those. Um, Fort Worth, Texas, um, because I went through it, uh, is just beginning theirs. Um, they started it in 2020. They have, uh, I can't remember the structure uh, per se, but it's got analysts. So it's a lot of, it seems to be right now, the structure seems to be more as um, complaint intake and analyzing um, the different types of um, complaints and all the actions with the police. So it's not completely set up yet, but I did wanna to talk to um, the person um, who's the director. Um, um, I was told that she has done police review accountability boards in other cities. So I haven't had a chance to talk to her yet, but um, it was quite interesting because I, I, they're starting a new, so they're probably gonna have questions for us as well to see what we're doing. So I found that interesting. Um, and when I did get to Austin, Texas, they're set up similar to us. It's a volunteer group. Uh, instead of 20, they have 10 
um, and they have bylaws. And let me look real quick. I got some notes. Um, just kind of give you a little overview if I can find it. Um, so I'll just read their scope that kind of gives you a, uh, the scope of their community po uh, police review commission. Um, they make policy level recommendations regarding discipline, training, community relations, um, and the complaint process. Um, they address um, any other issues or concerns by the community review patterns and practices of the Austin Police uh, Department. It says critical um, in incidents, I'm sorry, critical incidents and review individual cases of police misconduct. Um, make fair and objective recommendations and make decisions based only on the facts and evidence and assess the effectiveness of the police. So it doesn't appear, at least from my initial research, um, that they have the same types of powers. Um, they have their commissioners uh, listed here, um, similar application process. Um, and they have a history. So I haven't gone back far enough to see the original article um, that that um, started the police um, a, a commission. So I don't have that detail. But what I did find when I was looking at the um, Fort Worth, Texas, they have a very good process. Um, it seems like they're working on a very good pro. Uh, it looks like they have the start of a really good process that we were thinking about of um, documenting and intake for complaints. So I was interested in that because it seems to be quite, um, because it seems like they're focusing on that. I think they have a good structure is where I'm going, uh, at least for um, taking, being accountable for the process, intakes, how many complaints and having that whole process. So that might be one of the benefits of having, um, looked at the wrong one. <laughs> I, I got something out of that. Um, I did not look into Ohio. I didn't get time to do that. But um, I did talk to, um, actually, as a friend of mine um, who's in the double NAACP, and I was asking about some of the things that they have there, because I know that oh, came up in their last um, Commissioner Sophia, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to make sure that uh, Eric wants to ask you about uh, Dallas for work or uh, Austin. Is there any questions or comments before Commissioner Sophia goes to an ACP? Okay, go ahead. There's no comments or questions. Thank you. Um, so um, um, there is nothing that I found directly online, but they have a team of experts. And that's in our next section um, of the process here. So I will reserve that for our next um, session. That's all I have for now. Thank you, Commissioner. And I know Commissioner Catherine and Commissioner Lovisa, do you have any research to have done that you wanna share? No. No, I don't have anything at this time. Thank you so much, everyone who did so much work and so much research. This has been very enlightening. Um, thank you. And and yeah, thank you for... Okay, then we can go to the open discussion then. And for the open discussion, we have heard about from several members about the practices and other juris, jurisdictions, juris, uh, sorry, jurisdictions. Which of those practices do you as subcommittee members like? Which do you think should be considered best practice by the commission? This conversation will be used by subcommittee co-chairs to put together, together a draft of the areas of agreement on best practice from other jurisdictions. Which 
will be considered by this subcommittee later in this phase of work before being referred to the full commission for approval at the end of this phase. After that, this document will be used as a list of model practices by the PAC in future phases of work. This, I will repeat the questions. Which do you think should be considered best practices by the commission? And which of those practices do you as subcommittee members like? Commissioner Dan, please go ahead. Um, uh, I think I'm glad that you asked which ones do we like, because I still don't like the term best practices without us actually doing the investigation into what actually worked. But that being said, um, somebody mentioned mediation in one of the cities. I forgot to mention that that's very heavily relied on in New York. And they said that 90% of the mediations are successful, meaning that both the officer and the civilian walked away feeling that they got to hear each other, even if they didn't agree on everything. Um, so I think including mediation is really important. Um, it's been here, here in Portland since the old review board before IPR, the PIIAC. Um, several people mentioned how officers' names are publicized, and I, you know, I don't know how we're going to get around the state laws around privacy on that, but I think that's really important too. In New York, they publish the officers' names online and their history their, of complaints um, and the outcomes of those complaints. Um, so I think that's important. Um, I don't think we need to put this necessarily into the guidelines we're writing up because it's going to happen naturally. But somebody mentioned the Garrity warning. I don't know if everybody's familiar with what that means, but that's basically saying we're going to compel you to testify officer so-and-so. Um, but if you say something here that basically admits to a crime because we're compelling you to do that or you're going to be fired, we can't use that information to prosecute you because we made you give up your Fifth Amendment rights. Uh, so I think that's a very best practice <laughs> to not violate the officer's rights. Um, it may, as I said, it may not need to be written into our system, but I think it's important for us to um, think about that you know, and, and, and assure the PPA when they come before us that we're not interested in trying to do a gotcha thing where they are forced to say, I committed a crime and then they get prosecuted for it, um, but rather that we're going to follow the law and the Constitution, um, I, I hope. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And before I pass it to Commissioner uh, Monica, I will remind that this is an open discussion. And thank you, Commissioner Dan, because he was brief. And remember, you can be brief and participate several times, but our goal is that everyone participate. And finally, please, before we're looking into your comments, and then the conversation already started. Commissioner Monica? Um, the, the things that I thought, again, best practices is not a good term because Philadelphia is just now starting to get this process going, so they don't know how it's really going to work, but what I really like about their process as it's written um, are the reporting, uh, the reporting of all the cases and all the outcomes. They're being very, very, very transparent. That, I think, is something that is going to help people kind of trust the system a little bit more. Um, I also really like that they have a, a, a well-paid established executive director paid by the city with city staffers and investigators that will be, you know, their executive director. Uh, and then the board is a supportive, um, is, is, is another system that is, you know, volunteer citizen board. But I really like that uh, they're funding those, those positions as an important, paid, respected position that I think will give it some gravity. Um, and um, the, the, the power of subpoena, uh, the power of subpoena and the centralizing of all of these investigations into one system instead of having these little bits and pieces that get investigated by different groups and different people, they're centralizing all of their complaints into this one system. Every single complaint is gonna go into this one system, um, which I really think is, is, is good, they're gonna be meeting every two weeks, they're gonna be busy, um, but they're gonna take every single citizen complaint and every single complaint in general, unless it has something to do with labor. So I thought, I thought that was really cool. Thank you, Commissioner Monica.
Commissioner Lovisa? Sure, I just wanted to say um, I second Dan. Garrity warnings absolutely are best practice. Um, there's actually there's a lot of best practices when it comes to um, Garrity and taint and um, but I, I'm sure we'll get into that later. Um, uh, something that stuck out to me, San Francisco um, mediator training, 40 hour mediator training. Um, I agree. I, I don't love the this phrasing um, until we kind of know a little bit more. But um, the idea of uh, the, the mediators uh, or anybody in the organization, frankly, having a standardized form uh, of training. Um, I, I kind of feel like, you know, it's like as we've been talking, I've been sort of like making like a little chart of like, you know, kind of what an organization might look like. And it kind of reminds me almost of like, um, it's almost like if you're drafting a team, you know, but you have like a salary cap and like there's, you know, there's so many positions that we're, we're going to want. And I just want to make sure that like training doesn't get short shrift um, in, in, in all the work. Um, I also really appreciated um, have the use of independent counsel, um, especially if you have subpoena powers. It's like, who's going to write those subpoenas? You know, it certainly would help to have an attorney, preferably more than one attorney, um, so that you have some institutional memory. And also, uh, somebody pointed out, you know, uh, I think it was Commissioner Handelman pointed out the difficulty of having an appeals process where the complaint is just coming back to the same people who looked at it the first time. Um, I kind of was like, man, why don't, I don't know, I mean, uh, maybe somebody has mentioned this, but sort of the use of like an alternate track where you have like a special master or like another attorney who is sort of like somewhat separate from the, the process, but who is um, maybe able to consult on things like appeals. Um, oh, and also uh, the taking in that, I like the single point of intake um, for every single complaint. I think that that sounds a lot more uh, user friendly. Um, yeah. Okay. Those are some of my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lovisa. Commissioner Catherine. Thank you. Um, so I, I just following up on that question I had for Debbie about, um, how the city of Oakland does it in terms of the directives. I went back to look at your notes and, and that's a pretty interesting way they have it set up where they have um, an oversight board that reviews the directive. About. Okay. Go, so, go ahead, go ahead. I'm okay. Um, concerns around misconduct. And that's a pretty interesting concept. Um, because I, I know we've talked a little bit about this before that, um, you know, a, a citizen may feel like they've um, been subjected to misconduct, but if it doesn't technically violate a directive, then the, um, the finding of misconduct will not be um, sustained, or I'm not quite sure what the words would be in terms of our our uh, matrix here in Portland, but that the directives are a key part of over of um, ensuring um, uh, police um, uh, the appropriateness of police conduct and the ability to hold them accountable. So I thought the Oakland um, dynamic was pretty interesting. I will say, just looking at your notes, Debbie, one of the things that I, I don't really like is that they continue to have internal affairs operating and it sounds like they do that because of the budgetary issues that we talked about at a recent meeting that the sort of why Portland still has um, internal affairs and IPR running in a parallel and somewhat overlapping way because IA has more um, uh, budget uh, than IPR. It seems like under our new model with a certain percentage of the police budget going to the new accountability commission, we, we shouldn't have those issues and we might be able to fold them in like other um, cities do, which does seem like a best practice to eliminate that overlapping um, and those overlapping commissions. And then the last thing I want to say on Oakland and probably why it uh, was of interest to me is when you know, in the past, when I've looked at directives and um, offered comments on use of force, 
often um, advocates in the area would suggest I look to Oakland because um, it's been subject to so much litigation over the years um, that ultimately their directives are, are viewed as um, being subjective to enough civil rights litigation that they're pretty good. So I, I do think Oakland, um, based on my experience, is a pretty good model to look at, given the fact that there's been a lot of attention um, focused on police accountability in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Catherine. Commissioner Debbie? So I just wanted to highlight something I thought was interesting that, and, to, and maybe something we want to incorporate is um, in the Oakland, I think it's, no, this is Denver, sorry. Uh, in the Denver uh, system, when they're choosing their monitor, who's the head of the civilian agency, um, they have a screening committee that consists of the chair of the citizen oversight board, a city council member, a current or retired judge, a director of the career services authority, which I kind of think maybe is like the HR department, I don't know, a person with extensive knowledge of internal police investigations or monitoring, but who has never been employed by the Denver police sheriff or fire department, and a justice system involved community member selected by the oversight board. So I just thought it was really interesting that when when you're hiring people in you know at that level, it's 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 I love the way that they have kind of a whole array of people from different perspectives that are actually you know looking at the applications or however they do it, and um, and even including somebody who would who's who's been involved with the justice system. So um, yeah, so I think that is something we might want to consider. And I know like with the citizen review committee, you know they have a little one there. Uh, recruiting new CRC members, they have you know, a, a small, you know, selection committee that reviews applications. And so it's, I think it's sort of nice to get these sort of side committees to look at, at different people for jobs like that. Thank you, Commissioner Monica, then Commissioner Dunn. Yeah. Um, the other thing I really liked about uh, what they've written in Philadelphia is that I'll, I'll read it from, from directly from the law. The commission shall, ha shall have access to crime scenes and same access as a department to investigate materials, including the right to be present at all interviews with witnesses and department officers. So they're gonna be present during even the interview with the officer. Um, and they have access to department internal affairs and standard and accountability division to all department files, records, and depart department personnel records related to matters within the purview of the commission. They have access to all of the records. And I thought that was cool too. Thank you. Commissioner Dan, then Commissioner Sophia. I think Commissioner Glenn hasn't gone in this part yet, so I'll let her go first before me. Thank you. Commissioner Sophia. Um, I just wanted to say there was one interesting point that I heard, and I also recognized it. And with the Fort Worth, is they have full time. Um, these people are hired full time. They have a staff, and I know we have a staff as well. Um, but my thought is, depending on how we ended up, we end up structuring this. We may need to consider uh, different types of full time staff, possibly. Um, depending on what, what, how everything gets structured is all I'm saying. I just feel like I, I, there, there's, I'm listening, I'm thinking back to, you know, one of the comments the police chief made and, and others just like, oh, this is a volunteer board. Um, you know, I, I think it's just, you know, I, he thought it was not fair, is, I think is what his word was, um, to have um, volunteers doing this type of work. But um, so I'm just saying that maybe as we go through, we think about some other positions, maybe on the board that might be full time. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dan and then Commissioner Debbie. Uh, so I mentioned this, um, that basically all uh, three cities that I looked at or uh, jurisdictions uh, had um, you know, boards between uh, 11 and 23 members, but they, the hearings for individual cases were done by three people. I am very um, supportive of the idea of taking a, a large um, group 
and then having it be able to break into smaller groups to like much like our subcommittee uh, to make it easier to spread out the work and make sure every every case gets the attention it deserves. I feel like one of the main things we're trying to focus on is the diversity and the representation of the community. And one of the big problems to me is you only have three people that's not really going to be representative of the community. So um, I'm I'm thinking that if, if we look at a model where it's breaking down into smaller panels, they would be no smaller than five. Uh, and you know, currently that's how the Citizen Review Committee is allowed to function. They have never ever done it. They never ended up getting enough um, cases coming in. They were backlogged before their quorum was lowered from eleven to uh, you know from uh, six, right from six to five, so that they could meet in panels of five. But they never did that because they didn't have enough cases. So. Anyway, my point is, I want to make sure we think about diversity uh, if we're going to do the panel thing. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Devi? I just wanted to follow up on, again, on, I mean, on Catherine's comment about the, you know, when you have internal affairs and then the civilian agency both doing investigations, it seems sort of wasteful. And so just want to make note of the fact that in the, the Oakland people, when I looked at their, their commission has all these ad hoc committees and standing committees. And one of their committees is looking at um, having all of the investigations be taken care of by the CPRA. And they're actually are hiring a consultant to help them figure out how to make that happen. So, so they're headed in that direction, but they're not, sounds like they're not there yet. Thank you. Commissioner Sophia. I forgot to put my hand down, sorry. We have one more minute and then we need to go to next steps. Let's go, Commissioner Dan. Sorry, I just, uh, somebody talked about how important the review of policies are. New York's uh, review system, the CCRB, has a policy unit. So it's not just you know, like a subcommittee of the boards, like there's staff and lawyers looking at the policies along with the, um, with the civilians. So that's uh, another thing that is intriguing to me in terms of what uh, Commissioner Graham was saying. You know, do we need a staff person that's just focused on policy, perhaps? Thank you. And now we're going to go to the next steps and further uh, research. At the next meeting, we will continue to discuss on best practice from other jurisdictions. To do the research from now until then, we need to assign members of the subcommittee to research jurisdictions and report back as we did today. These researchers won't be deciding what's a best practice after the presentation at the next meeting. The subcommittee will pick and choose which items they consider best practice. And while we, before going to the break, we need to have volunteers for the next. Yes, Commissioner Lovisa. Sure. Well, I'm not sure if this quite falls under that, but in terms of um, jurisdictions, I could still uh, uh, that are, that still merit taking a look at. Um, another PAC member uh, suggested that we take a look at Baltimore and Albuquerque um, mm -hmm. for their practices, and I would be happy to to volunteer to do the research on those two. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Lovisa. Commissioner Monica. Um, when I was having conversations in Philadelphia, they recommended that somebody look into Chicago. Chicago's apparently had three iterations since 2000 of the same, and they have learned and relearned and, and learned not to do, I guess, multiple times. And the people in Philadelphia work with Chicago very closely to write, to write what they came up with. And would you like to do Chicago? <laughs> oh, yeah, um, no, no, you're just suggesting. I'm suggesting Chicago. I'm okay. honestly, I'm, I'm catching a flight to Peru on Wednesday, and I'm going to be gone for two weeks, so I'm probably not a good person to volunteer for that right now. That, that's fine. Thank you. And if somebody from the commissioner wants to do uh, research on Chicago, let me know. Commissioner Catherine? I can do Chicago. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, Commissioner Dan. Well, 
I, I think it's great that we have, that's, as I said, we have seven of us, so there's, you know, we can look at more cities, and I think that's important. Personally, I'm interested in going back to the jurisdictions that I was assigned to and calling the staff and saying, hey, on paper it says this is what happens, blah, blah, blah. Can you tell me what really happened? And then ask the three questions that I um, suggested at the end of our list, which is, you know, if you, uh, what barriers are you facing? If you could add other powers, what would you want? And is there anybody else we should talk to? Uh, and then I also like to try to uh, talk to community activists in those um, jurisdictions to say, okay, do you know people went through here? Have you gone through it? What do you think about this oversight board? And what do you think? What do you think should be improved? Uh, and how does it really work? Because you know, again, if you look at what it's written down for IPR and CRC and what actually happened, they're very different. So I, I want to hear from people on the ground um, what's actually working and not working. So I'm hoping that that's okay. Uh, we sort of got the permission to do that from staff and the co-chairs uh, between this, the last meeting and now. Uh, we just have to say, you know, I'm not speaking on behalf of the whole commission, uh, and then uh, at least alert staff to let them know that the communication is happening. That's my understanding. I hope that's true. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And Commissioner Dan's suggestion is that for the members that have the same jurisdictions and they want to go deeper, if they can go deeper and call people and ask questions, that would be great. Another city I want to suggest, because I know the, uh, the ballot measure was uh, based, at least a part, is New Orleans. And if somebody wants to do any research on New Orleans, that would be great too. Yes, Commissioner Monica? I, I just wanted to second what Dan said. I think, uh, you know, when I was talking to, to uh, the people and I, I talked to four people in Philadelphia. I learned a lot and, you know, talking to different people from different, you know, different roles was helpful. Um, so just, just reading the law wasn't enough, you know? So, yeah, I, I think, I think it's, it's good to talk to who is being affected directly as well, because it doesn't necessarily reflect what may be happening. Thank you, Commissioner Monica. Commissioner Lovisa? Sure, I just wanted to follow up on Commissioner Handelman's uh, question, comment about reaching out to, um, uh, just reaching out to folks externally. Um, we did get some uh, guidance on this, um, uh, and I just wanted to re go, sort of go over it again really quick, um, and I think there's going to be maybe an email making this more, more clear, but um, it's sort of a four-step process. Uh, number one, use your official email, use your PAC email. Basically, we want to try to be in compliance with public records um, and we want to try to keep some record of the fact that, you know, th uh, this interaction happened. So use, please use your PAC email. Um, generally, it's best practice to set up a set up a call via email. Um, uh, once again, that way we have a public record of it as opposed to you calling on the phone or cold calling. Um, it, you're welcome to ask questions to the person outside the outside of, you know, PAC. Um, uh, if they ask you questions, um, if those are questions that uh, can be answered using publicly available information, feel free to answer them. Um, if there's any question that you cannot answer by directing them to the website, um, please bring that, please direct them uh, to, to staff, to co-chairs, sort of like bring that question back. Um, and then when the when the phone call is over, please write an email to staff and co-chairs documenting that the call happened. Once again, like it's it's mostly just trying to make sure that we're respecting the the public records rules. Thank you, Commissioner Lovisa. Very important. We're gonna go to a break, but is that any volunteers to do New Orleans? I'll do New Orleans. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Sophia. Okay, there is A16. We're gonna get back at A25, nine minutes break. Oh, Commissioner Monica, go ahead. I, I just wanna make sure we answer, where there's a question in the Q&A, are we gonna get to that in a little bit? We're gonna get to the question, okay. yes. Thank you. Then come back at A25. Thank you. Let's go to slide number 15.
Okay. Now we're gonna review previous suggestions and we're gonna quickly review the portion of the subcommittee's mandate related to the areas of agreement on suggestions to consider from experts and academics. Next slide, please. And I will pass it to staff. Um, so uh, we reviewed this at our June 2nd meeting. So we'll just talk about the highlighted parts that relate to the document that we're about to have the subcommittee go into. Um, one of the outcomes the PAC committed to finishing during the fact-finding phase of work is the areas of agreement document on suggestions to consider from experts and academics. The upper portion is in the um, agenda and scope document and the bottom is the specific document. Um, next slide, please. So uh, then under the document, the, the subcommittee was charged at the time of its creation with developing this document, the areas of agreement on suggestions to consider from experts and academics and referring that to the full commission. This subcommittee will have roughly four or five meetings over this phase of work to complete um, this document as well as the one that the subcommittee just discussed before our break. And this is the second of those meetings. <clears throat> Next slide, please. And then um, the list that was uh, made out was uh, a little bit uh, shorter at the April 26th meeting. Subsequently, it was added to with Eileen Lua Firebaugh, as well as the NAACP and um, a couple of others. But the main ones were that were on the list originally are NACOL and OJP, um, or the National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement and the Office of Justice Programs, which is part of the DOJ, the Department, US Department of Justice. So the purpose of the next uh, conversation is to develop that list further prior to um, conducting research on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna have a round robin discussions. Are there additional experts or academics that you would like to add to the list? And remember, be brief, Everyone will be asked to speak once and can take up to two minutes to speak. Raise hands on Zoom and allow the facilitator to call you. And please remember the facilitation use a weighted stack and will now always call on the first person to raise their hand and be constructive, look forward and discuss how to make the commissions work more successful in the future of each questions. Are there experts or academics within or outside Portland that you would like to add to the list? And our list currently has only two groups on it, NACOLE and the Office of Justice Programs at the DOG. Who would like to add to the list? Uh, Commissioner Dan? Um, okay, so I'm gonna start with a broader concern and then we'll get to my, my nomination. Sure. My broader concern is that we were told that this subcommittee has four meetings total and this is our second meeting. And I wanna spend the next meeting doing what we did this week with the other cities that we haven't got to and with the information we're bringing back, which leaves us one meeting after that. I'm a little worried we're not going to get to all this work in what's being laid out for us. So, and this is very, very important for the next phase of work. Um, uh, and uh, kind of adding to that, the question that came up in the Q&A has to do with the questions that we asked. And I, I, I believe that it's fine since we've already circulated for me to circulate the list of the 23 questions we're asking uh, when we're doing the research and plus the three we're hoping to talk to people about. I, I'm hoping it's okay for me to post that in the chat for the community members to look at. Because um, uh, I think one of the things for me is I'm a detail-oriented guy and we're going to be talking about every single detail of the new board. And we just kind of talked very broadly about some of the big picture stuff tonight. Um, and it would be helpful for me to get down to some of the nitty gritty and make sure that we have uh, examined other cities' practices, whether they're best or not, um, in every single aspect of this to help inform what we're going to do in the next phase. So I'm worried that we're not, we don't have enough time to do what we're being, we're trying to accomplish. 
Okay, that being said, the very first person expert that we had consulted um, at Portland Cop Watch when we were working on this is a, a gentleman named Samuel Walker. He's in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, he wrote a book a couple of years ago that's supposedly comprehensive. I, I think it's worthwhile reaching out to him. I will say that at some point in his academic career, he became convinced that uh, the auditor form of uh, oversight, where you don't do investigations yourself, is um, a better one than the kind of one that we already are commissioned to do because that was voted on by the people of Portland. Um, so I don't necessarily agree with him about everything, but I think it'd be helpful to have his, um, his input. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Monica? Um, the National, National Police Accountability Project um, may be a, a good organization. Um, and I, I think we should look into it. I, I do worry, I agree, Dan, that I don't know, you know, we're, we're looking at these cities very briefly, and now we're going to add on experts and social justice movement. I mean, the, the amount of information that we're going to start gathering here is so immense that I don't know if two meetings is going to be enough. Like, is there a chance to expand this action a little bit? longer or is it worth it or i mean uh what what does everybody think about that thank you commissioner sofia yes just to address the do we have enough time we've got a lot of work to do um angie and i just uh, became the co-chairs last week so we are going to be getting together to discuss that further. Um, in addition to that, um, I'd like to work with uh, Angie and you all to come up with a group of questions similar to what Dan was suggesting so that when we do come back, we will have something to compare uh, each of these um, different <clears throat> organizations with. So we can have something to just look at and say, okay, this one does this one, that one does that one, and not having so many different things. So we can focus on something. So Angie and I are also going to be working on that. Um, so um, I'm going to let Samir talk real quick, and then I'll come back. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, sorry if I coughed during this. The, um, the, point that Sophia just made is, is accurate that that we uh, had you know the first meeting before having um, co-chairs be selected so the plan was a little bit um, you know made and, and able to be tweaked and so after seeing today's meeting and, and the pacing not, not that it's too slow or too fast or anything like that but just looking at it examining that um, co-chairs of the full commission as well as the, the subcommittee can talk with uh, with regard to potentially adding more meetings to the schedule. So that's definitely um, not a problem at all. Um, and I'll stop talking and let you use the time that you have to. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. Um, Commissioner Sophia, you want to continue and then Commissioner Monica? Yes, and um, uh, in addition to that, uh, we'll be sending a, an email around to you guys because um, kind of reiterating or informing up um, some of the best practices, I guess, um, Le Commissioner LaVisa mentioned, um, including the co-chairs on, on those emails as well, just so we all know what's going on. Um, but that's it for now, and I'll just let um, Monica go. I guess she's the next one, right? Yes, thank um, you. Thank you. Um, the other thing that does concern me a little bit is that these cities that we're talking to are so different that it's going to be really hard to put them into a nice little chart where everything fits nicely, you know, because there are so many different designs out there. It's it's kind of baffling. It's not going to it's not going to fit nicely. <laughs> um, it's just if we ask some of the same questions, we can at least compare the answers to the questions. I mean, they're all gonna be very different. Um, we could just categorize them like best practices, um, things of that nature, just so we can kind of kind of get our wrap our minds around what the differences are and some of the things we'd like to do. You know, we'd like to take away from those. Oh, 
I agree. It's going to be difficult. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Dan? Uh, yeah, so um, just kind of backing up a little bit. Uh, when this commission, this subcommittee first met, um, I can't remember who it was, but another commissioner took questions to Commissioner Iona had floated uh, about um, what we need to find out. And then I took and expanded on that list and to make this list of what's now 26 questions, 23 are paper and three are for in person. I just uploaded that into the chat. So I'm, um, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, I guess, a little frustrating that our, um, our, our our subcommittee hasn't had enough meetings, but it's only our second meeting, to, um, to recognize that we do have a list of questions already that uh, can help guide this um, research. But it, there, I, I posted it there in the chat. The public can download it now. Um, and uh, I just, for, as a note to uh, people who've been working on this already, I found an extra question about what the review board itself does, which is what is your voting process? Um, so I know we're not I'm, we're not talking about experts, but we're sort of talking about process stuff. And I think um, I just wanted to get that in there. Thank you. And before I pass it to Christine, Commissioner Dan, uh, Samir already explained that if they can be add more meetings to this subcommission, if you don't have enough, they, it's no problem to add more meetings. That means there is going to be enough meetings to do this work right. Don't worry about it. Commissioner Christine? I wish I was a commissioner. I'm a facilitator, though. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Christine? <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, I will say Dr. Christine. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Just wanting to bring us back. Um, to academics and experts, if that's all right. Just redirecting us back to your question, Victoria. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for your support, Dr. Christine. <laughs> Commissioner Sophia. So I did mention uh, last time, and I still haven't looked it up, but I know that there was um, a, a a very in-depth, um, some research done on police accountability with, uh, I think it was the uh, New York Times, and I will get that straight. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of information in there. And there's a couple of other universities, um, and I mentioned this before, that I don't have the names right off, off the bat, but um, that has done, that's what they do. They have a whole department. Uh, dedicated to that kind of thing. So I, I just have to get those written down, but I do know that there's a couple universities as well for experts. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sofia. And again, I will remind if your comment is not about what we're doing, please don't, I'm not, I will stop the comment right now. We need to questions organization and experts, academics, members that want to research. Thank you. Commissioner Devi. Well, I'm not gonna make any judgments on these, but I just put a link in there to a publication from the Department of Justice about police oversight in the United States. And there's a long list of references in there, Samuel Walker being one of them. So, you know, they had I, probably every expert about police oversight is in that list. So I was thinking maybe it would make sense to uh, take a closer look at that and see if uh, any of them look like they would be worth adding to the list. Oh, thank you. Put on the side, you know, not, not yes. right the second. Oh, no, thank you. That's very helpful. Thank you very much for this suggestion. Any other uh, organization, expert or academics members that we want to research. Commissioner Dan? Well, this is sort of merging these two conversations. So we have this list of things that we're trying to find out are going on in the review boards around the country. What are we asking these academics and experts? Or is it that, you know, the same, because we're not going to ask them, what do you do? You know, how many members are on your board? Because they, they're looking at all of them. So, what are the questions that we're going to ask? And I'm asking that rhetorically. I don't have an answer. Thank you. And uh, either the staff or the coaches want to answer that question? 
We're not, uh, when I say not asking them questions, we are right now just researching, getting another document or, um, oh, my brain is going dead tonight. Um, anyway, we're just documenting the places that may be of interest. So right now we are not asking the questions. We are looking for experts in the field of police accountability, um, and seeing how they might help. We're doing the same thing we did before. We're just doing it on a different area of academics and experts. Thank you. And I will add this research is um, to look into those experts and academics, what they have run, the books, as you mentioned, Commissioner Dunn at the beginning, come up with a brief description of what they propose. It will be probably difficult to ask questions directly to them because we don't know if we can talk to them, but is come up with a brief description of something that was already proposed or wrote and present that information back to the subcommittee at the next meetings. That's what this part of the research is. You read something, you find a piece, you find an article, you find a book, and then on what to read it and what it is, and then bring the proposal to the group. Commissioner Monica, do you have another suggestion? Um, I think I think because you know I am not an expert in this field, I can't come up with a person or a name or an expert right now, but we could do some research into this and see what we find and see who we find and see if we can send an email to this person or that person and see what we find out. How, I mean, does that sound like a, like more, because I really, I, I don't, I don't know. Yes. The people we, in this field. We're, we're coming up with ideas. We're brainstorming. Okay. Right now. It's yeah. just a brainstorm. Um, if you come across something, if you, if, you, if it's like you said, if it's not, something that you're um, privy to, that's okay. Um, right now, we're just asking around. We're looking at things that we've seen in the past. I mean, just for instance, I have these things that I've seen and heard, but I didn't take note of them at the time. So now I have to go back and research um, exactly who it was and where they were. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, only, my only other issue is, uh, is that we may end up researching the same people and then you know we have such limited time that could we like say you know I will take last names a through f see what we find from last names a, a through f and then the next person will take g through m I don't know like some some way so that we're not duplicating work um because there are so many people out there that have been working on this situation you know on the situation that and and just let me yeah, and at the beginning, Commissioner Monica, everybody starts suggestion specifics and they want to, and they were added to their name. We then after we went to another conversation, but for example, just an example, Commissioner Debbie put a very interesting uh, articles about IPR police directive, transparency, etc. And when you click that document that she post, they has all this uh, information where this was published, and maybe that's a very good idea. You can say, I will check the five, the five firsts of this document, or the second, it can be assigned, we can, they can open it, and you can say, I will commit to check the first five, or the, or the last two, or it, it's just an idea of what you make, the, but you're right. It has, uh, is the same as the, cities or the jurisdictions, you can say, this is the ones I'm gonna check. For example, and organize. Commissioner Devi. As I've been looking through that, that uh, police oversight publication, uh, you know, at, on the references, like, like here's one that looks you know, interesting. Uh, it's a uh, article from academic journal called Importance of State Law and Police Reform. 
when it was written in 2016, so I'm not sure if it would be current enough, but you know, I mean, it's, if you skim through here, you, you kind of see some topics that look like they might apply to, to our situation that would be helpful if the authors were available to uh, fill us in. But that's, that's Thank you, Debbie, because I actually came across that, um, that document when I was doing my research for the other, uh, uh, the other two uh, cities. So yeah, I was about to go back to those to that document. I didn't have time to read it, but I did see it. It came up on my search. Um, so I'm gonna let him give it back to you, Victoria. Yeah, are you? You finish with your comment? Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna give it back. I was gonna wait for Dan. <laughs> See if oh, we get okay. more comments before I continue. Okay, okay, thank you. Commissioner Dan? Oh yeah, well, I, I don't know why I didn't think of this before, it didn't come up before. Campaign Zero, who are people who actually came to Portland to talk to city council about the police association contract. Um, they do research on all aspects of police accountability and one of the aspects is oversight systems. So um, they're grassroots, not, you know, highly academic, so that's a group, uh, and I'll, I'll volunteer to uh, touch base with them or look at their website or both. Thank you, thank you very much. Any, we need to have volunteers and think about what of these brainstorming ideas you have you can volunteer and read the article and do some research and bring any proposal that you think is good or you like to the next meeting. And there is some comments from the staff. They say una sign, N-A-C-O-L-E, O-G-P, Alien Luna Park, M-P-A-P, we just need volunteers that they can go and do research and then bring the proposals that they like. Commissioner Monica. Um, I'll volunteer for the National Police Accountability Project because I'm gonna be sitting in a plane for 36 hours and I'm sure I'm gonna have plenty of time in that respect. Research on, on, the, on the internet, I will be able to do. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Besides those, is there any more volunteers? In Commissioner Debbie, if I understand correctly, what you were volunteering to read the uh, the document that you post in the chat or was just a referral? Oh, I'm not, well, no, I, I actually read some of that book, but it's a, it's a big book. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, you know, I was thinking, uh, I how about if I go through the references mm -hmm. and pick out ones that look like they would be applicable to what we're doing? Because, I mean, some of them are from like 20 years ago. So, you know, it's oh. just... Uh, yeah, and then I'll make a whole list, and then, um, then maybe I don't know if I could send it back to the subcommittee, and anybody who wants to to read one of the articles could do that, and uh, we could get dibs on whichever ones we might want to read. So, is that how about if I just first go through and pull out all the ones that look like they're would be yeah relevant? Is that a good start? And then share it back with the subcommittee through the city email. No deliberations involved. That sounds great, Debbie. Okay, good. Thanks. I appreciate it. And then that way, if someone sees something, they can just um, reply all to the group and say, hey, I'm going to look at this one or that one. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Debbie. And Commissioner Catherine? Um, so I was just going to volunteer, and I, I think that I think I can't I couldn't remember whether Debbie was volunteering for whether that publication was OJP or the NACOLE. So I was volunteering. Let me see what the cover says on this. 
It's from that COPS office, the COPS federal thing. It's the title is Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement Report on State of the Field and Effective Oversight Practices. And it's uh, just came out like within the last year, I think. Yeah. Um, so that if they just have a nice neat list of references and I, you know, that's how come I thought that would be an easy place to look that it's all a lot of stuff in one place and it was published in 2021. So it's, you know, fairly fresh information. So is that okay, Catherine? Yeah, I'm, I'm still, cops. Um, so I'm just trying to see what that, whether that leaves me with the, um, The OJP is that that's different than <laughs> good question. Are they different or the same? Um, it's a separate initiative. Is it separate? Oh, good. Is it separate? Samara? Okay, I can do that. I, I mean, it sounds like we at least need to research these to figure out what they are. So yeah. I will do that. So I'm taking on then the um, OJP Office of Justice Programs, part of the US Department of Justice. Thank you, Commissioner Catherine. Is that Commissioner Dan? So I, I just had a clarifying question before I volunteer. The Eileen Luna Firebaugh, she did a an analysis of the current the system that's currently here in Portland, but it was done in 2008, but a lot of it still applies frankly, um, is that, is her name on the list so that we review that 2008 document or so that we look at broader other things that she might have done in her expertise as a, somebody who's been involved in oversight for 30 years? Um, I, I'm not 100% clear what the assignment would be, but I'm interested in it. And? I will say the assignment it would be for you to look at it and figure out if there's anything that could be useful for us. Um, since no one's looked at it, that would be helpful. Oh, her brother work. Okay, yes. Thank you. Uh, we need to go to public comment, but before go to public comment, is there any other Commissioner that wants to volunteer and another piece of information or document organization. Commissioner Catherine, do you have your hand? Raised? Oh, sorry. I just forgot to take it down. Okay. Okay, then can we go to a slide 23? Thank you very much for all the ones that have volunteered. Thank you. Well, we will now take public comment on the issues that PAC is discussing or community members can also tell the story about policing and police accountability. We ask members of the public to keep their comments or questions to two minutes and raise their hand and Zoom if you like to speak. And I also will, um, oh, there's no open questions. Okay. Um, now it's time for public comment. I will wait in case. Okay. Welcome Rochelle and please um, make your comment. Yes, uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, it, it's abundantly clear um, as uh, I listen to you all tonight that um, every jurisdiction does their work a little bit differently. Um, and no one has found the absolutely best way to do things. Um, and uh, many of the jurisdictions like Chicago, for example, are on their fourth or fifth iteration. And so people are uh, looking at themselves again and again and again. So the one thing that I, I might suggest to you that in um, the plan for this new commission, you uh, create uh, a system that allows itself to look at itself uh, 
internally and change itself without a cumbersome and lengthy process. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dorshel, for your comment. We appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Is there any other public comment? Okay, I don't think we have more public comments. And now we go resume a screen share and go to slide 24. Is there elements for the garden plot recap? either Dr. Christine or a staff? What uh, I captured, <coughs> excuse me, um, is do we have enough time to do this work was one thing that came up and that more meetings can be scheduled. Um, and, and so that was the only garden plot that I captured. I'd like to check with staff to see if there were any others that I did not capture. Um, just that anything that was not um, volunteered for for this particular round of research between today and the next meeting on uh, July 14th would essentially be in the garden plot to be uh, opened up for potential volunteers for research between the July 14th and the following meeting um, of, the, uh, <clears throat> of the subcommittee. So um, that means Samuel Walker from Omaha and the NACOLE group were not volunteered for. Uh, correct. And then there are other jurisdictions that may come up as well, but I don't know that they have a presence. Uh, and that was all that I wanted to uh, have. Thank you. And That's all I have. Thank you, Dr. Christine and staff. There are also a comment about social justice organizations. And I don't know that you have a specific list of who will contact. I'm just going to put it out uh, in case that you want to add it to the list. I know it was mentioned before, and I think we don't have a list. Okay, Commissioner Dan. Oh, yeah, I had another uh, point of clarification question, um, which is there are seven of us on this subcommittee. There are seven people on the community engagement subcommittee. Can we reach out to the rest of the commission and see if anybody's willing to help us with some of this research if we uh, don't have people on the subcommittee? I mean, is it legit for somebody who's not part of the subcommittee to do the research along with us? Yes, Dan. It's okay. We welcome any other of the commissioners to participate at any time. I think we, we had that in the email earlier, maybe a month or so ago, that you can come off and on the commission as as the subcommittee, sorry, as you as you wish. Thank you. Now is a59. Um, we don't have time to summarize, but we uh, we will thank you. We will adjourn this meeting at A59. And I want to thank you each of the commissioners for your willingness and your commitment and because your participation and also for everything that you commit to do for next meeting. Thank you very much. I also want to thank you the interpreters and the staff and of course, Christine for support and the facilitation. And I want, okay, let me see. Thank you for the members of the public for being here and contributing questions and thoughts. You can give relevant public comment in advance at meetings. And please send up for emails updates on the Police Accountability Commission.
Thank you. This meeting is adjourned.